You are very lucky we're not in the eating mode, buddy. Oh. <laughs> hey, bye. <laughs> you go back or you're all home. Yeah, baby. Okay. Every one of these fish Bad. is loaded with food. Bad. So you land it, you can probably 50 each on this one spot. I think we're going to have some fun here, oh, buddy. We're going to have a blast. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Ram Trucks, built to serve. Prince Craft Boats, dominate the waters. Garmin, plot your paradise, reel them in. And Ontario Canada, in partnership with Destination Ontario. Hi everybody, on today's Fishing Canada show, we've got such a unique experience to share with you. You bird dog? This episode Boy. is as much about travel and destination as it is about fishing. We're heading to a body of water that fishes like a fly-in without the airplane. We also have the option of bringing our own boat. Oh, and wait, there's more. We have to get the boat too. <laughs> so we brought along FNC-1, our 20-foot Prince Craft. Of course, when towing the Prince Craft boat on a road trip like this, there's always frequent stops. Oh, the price tag of that gas. One is gassing up the truck and boat. And it's one we'd like to bypass. But if you want to play, you got to pay. And so the people rejoice. They agree. Suck into it. Yeah. And they voted for it. Now, is it just your voice? So if I say stop recording? If you say go pro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording. And of course, who can pass by a local Northern Ontario tackle shop without stopping in and buying all kinds of stuff that you'll probably never use? And then of course, there's the sorting and stowing of your new, probably never to be used, fish annihilating goodies. It's all part of the fishing road trip experience. And then there's the best anticipation of all arriving at the landing and launching the rig. Our unique destination today is Garden Island Lodge on Lady Evelyn Lake, which incidentally is set in a very solitary part of the North Country. After a short boat ride on the Montreal and Lady Evelyn Rivers, we were picked up, that's our fully loaded boat and motor, at the bottom of a dam and trailered up and over to the main lake. This is such an awesome experience and one we've never done with a 20-foot rig. From there, it's a beautiful 20-mile boat ride north to the lodge. And if you're anything like us, it's a quick unloading of the baggage and then on to the fishing. Got one? Yep. Not huge. Is it, is it a netable? Uh, I don't want to yeah. say. Seagull just behind us, it grabs something too. Maybe the minnows are starting. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, I lost my minnow. Maybe it's... Hey, they're just starting to bite. Look, the birds are out. Exactly, I'm saying. <laughs> the canoeists show up, they know when they come, come here when the fish are biting. We need a net, you think? I don't know, I haven't seen them yet. I mean, it's a walleye for sure. Yeah, I'm gonna be ready. I'm gonna be ready, Freddy. There he is. Uh, Hi, little guy. Little wee guy. That's a nice little fish, though. Little wee guy, you have to net him because net otherwise him it'll break. The yeah. line will break. Come here. Or not. <laughs> He's a jumper. Hey. All right. All right. That's now what is the slot here? That's a great question. If you're keeping your fish, most of these places now in Ontario have a slot limit, or a lot of them do, maybe not most of them. You know. And you gotta know your slot limits. You gotta you keep one the wrong size and you could get busted big time. So it's funny, it wasn't that long ago. It was unheard of to have limits and slot limits and all yeah. that. You come up to uh, places like this and you just keep fish after fish, right? Especially walleye that are so tasty. But uh, didn't take long for everybody to find out that that's not a very successful way to grow a fishery. Good color right now. Fish, yeah, it's cool. It's neat, they're really dull. Look at this tail, look at the tail on them. Yeah, all split so up. Weird, eh? That wasn't from us, that's, uh, that shows you, you that these fish can live. very lucky we're not in the eating mode, buddy. He's lucky that he wants to bite <laughs> See, in the face right now. <laughs> 
Look at the size of that minnow he was using, folks. <laughs> <laughs> go big or go home. Now here's a tip for anglers that are fishing the lake for walleye and smallmouth bass. Try using the drop shot technique. It's a phenomenal way of locating and catching both species quickly. If you're a walleye fanatic, you can start out with live bait like minnows, worms, or leeches, depending on the time of year. The trolling motor's not on. Okay, good. So good, you're good, okay. Good, good. And you're in 48 feet of water right now, so you're... Uh... Oh, there he is. Not that big, boys. Not that big. That's a nice walleye. Yeah, he's done. He's down deep. He's done. <sighs> That's a, look how pale that fish is in. <clears throat> look at that. Great eh? color, right? Eh? <gasps> he's not... <laughs> What do you mean he's not that big? That's a nice yeah, fish. He's, he's nice. That is a nice one. Look at the green back on. Yeah. What the heck? Look at the size of that minnow he was using, folks. <laughs> <laughs> you go big or go home. He's got the greenish colored back. Yeah. I don't know if you can show that. That's today. almost a blue. If you look, if you look through his back. Oh. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> if you look through the <laughs> That had a blue uh, hue on, on it that. It was a weird, yeah. yeah. We started out looking for walleye in one of Lady Evelyn's most popular big fish areas called the Dome. After Ans caught his first couple of fish, we had a quick chat and decided that since the lake was so close to the fall turnover period, making the bite tough, and these walleye were extremely deep, that we'd look for something shallower. This would also give us a chance to look for some of the great smallmouth bass that this lake has to offer. Our Garmin chart showed us a large complex hump that bottomed out at around 30 plus feet exactly what we were looking for. There's one. Got him? Yeah. Oh, nice. So, coming up, must nice be a smallie. Bend. Yeah. Gotta be a smallie. Oh, yeah. There he is. And... Oh, that's a nice fish, buddy. I don't know. I, can't, I haven't seen him yet. Oh, yeah. yeah. Not bad. <laughs> he's not bad. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> Okay, that's you know, you know what? what? That's where we're on our waypoint. We marked. Perfect. So we, those were small. Those we were saw. small out there. That's nice. Crazy. You want the net? That's a good uh, fish. Well, I'll try and get him. You gonna get him? I think so. so. We came in here and we just saw it loaded up with fish. But now we're getting here and it's like small mouth, small mouth, small mouth. So <laughs> no complaints from <laughs> no, us. No, we don't. We don't mind. We'll take. You know, we'd love to have walleye too. But and they were deep end. They were deep end. Uh, oh, that's shallow. nice. Come here, big fella. Hook nicely. He's fat fish, bud. Like, I that mean fat. A big, big smallie, buddy. Nice. Oh, yeah, he wasn't getting off. Perfectly hooked on the drop shot. That's nice. Woo! Fat, eh? Fat, look at that thing. And it's just, I mean, this, the rest of the season has got, gonna got be one easy. on, buddy. You got one too? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, he just broke me off. No. <laughs> Would it be a pike, you think, maybe? Or? Well, it might have been. That's Although it felt smallmouthish. Really, eh? I think we're going to have some fun here, oh, buddy. We're going to have a blast. He is killing me. Not that big. He's got a big hump on his head, though. Which is kind of cool. Looks like one of those mean fish. Oh, he's got belly. Look Whoa. at that. <laughs> got some chunk. Oh, line just broke off the tip, too. That's good. Good diving. Holy mackerel. Look at you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. It's <laughs> insane. We have found the mother load right oh, on our waypoint. What, what a, I mean, what a great bonus, eh? Oh, Absolutely great without bonus. Without a doubt. Fantastic. Well, that's why we came up, right? Walleye and small mouth, Yeah. Right? In you go, baby. I'll trade places with you. They're fat fish. They're not real long, but they are fat. They're fat, aren't they? Oh my God, yeah. Gorgeous. It's a nice light colored one. The last one I had was dark. We're probably sitting on, who knows how many we're sitting on right now. We haven't even run the live scope yet, Ant, out here. No. <laughs> I think if we run that, we'll go crazy. We'll go insane. We could probably just sit here for an hour and just drop. Like we're getting these literally off the same side of the boat and right there. Not even casting out or anything. When you're drop shotting like this and you've tied that knot, a lot of cases the hook isn't sitting straight down below and all you have to do to make that, the hook change its, uh, its position is just to put a loop around the shaft and when you pull down on it, it sits straight down, which is the way you want it, like that. 
They're speaking of visibility, my colleague has a fish. <laughs> Look at how old that fish is. Like that's an old Northern Ontario smallmouth right there. Give me an indication of it's a one pound, two pound, three pound, four pound. Oh no. No. <laughs> maybe, maybe a half of that. Look at that thing dig, eh? Oh, Even a two pound smallie though, you gotta admit. But, they, yeah. They're incredible. Best uh, fighter, those and, and bluegill. Oh man. Imagine if a bluegill got that big. That'd be I nuts. I think he'd kick his butt. Yeah, a little better smallie. Oh, he's not bad. Yeah. Yeah, he's baby. Not bad. I got his baby brother tapping me right now. Have you? <laughs> oh my God, he's not very big at all. Ah, he got up. Like, I mean, tiny, piquito. Uh, you know what? We could probably get these things uh, on plastics, drop shotting plastics. I'll bet you a shad shape will work on these oh, real good right now. We'll beat them up, I bet you. Yeah, all right. Not let's... as good as a minnow, but pretty good. Yeah, let's try it. Yeah, those must be all smallies that we marked on the way in. I eh? wonder, eh? Yeah. I want to see what they are in the deep in the 30 plus. That's, that's the. I think this shoal is loaded with smallmouth, though, by the looks of things. If the fishing's hot, or you stumble onto a whack of smallies on live bait, you can then switch over to plastics and totally reap the benefits of the drop shot rig. Concept there is that the, the bait is always off the bottom, which is important, right? If, especially in the rubbly. This is all rubble and rock and, and all kinds of garbage. So if you had your bait at the bottom, like on a jig head, it would be buried most of the time away from, from the vision of the fish. But by having your weight at the bottom, your bait is always up off all that rubble and always visible. There's some, speaking of visibility, my colleague has a fish. <laughs> some weight there, buddy. He's right under the boat, so I'm gonna... You want motor off? It's off, I think. He's and I fight, got one. He's not fighting like a small, there's a double. Mine's not fighting like a smallie, that's all. If, if our theory is right, that I picked up one that was chasing Pete's, they should be kind of identical in size. What happens is that they, they, they predate in schools, these smallies. So when one fish gets something, the other pack members, they're like wolves. They want to take it away from that fish. Whoa, mine's giant. So, Whatever it is, it's is big, it big? Like, I mean, big. We got to get the net on this guy, I think. Okay. Honestly. I thought he was bigger than that, but he's a good one. Look at how old that fish is. Like that's an old Northern Ontario smallmouth right there. Watch your rod ends, please. Is that right? Yeah, you... you knew when you set the hook and it pulled drag on the hook set, you knew you had something of some I weight there. I saw that there. fish coming in and I saw the wind of it this way. <laughs> Down the back, you say, oh, God. Look at how every one of these fish Fat. is loaded with food. Fat. Like, it's incredible. They have a feed bag on right now. And you can tell they're a little slower too, and I think it's because they're so fat, Ange. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. because the water's not cold yet, so they're looking bad. Some light colored, some uh, really dark like yeah. that. Here you go, buddy. We have definitely got an advantage today um, on a lake like this with our own equipment. There's no mm -hmm. doubt. We were totally surprised. We said, we, we thought it was a drive to lake. We said, oh, we get to bring our boat in? Yeah, he says, yeah, no problem. I said, we'll get you in there. And he says, what do you mean we'll get you in there? And, uh, and Mike said, the lodge owner, and, and he says, well, we just gotta get, lift you up over the dam. And that's what they do. They have a homemade trailer with an old truck and a guy that charges the lodge a fee for you know bringing boats in, if you wanna bring your own boat in. It's the most unique thing we've ever done with this boat, I think, ever. They are a little bit of a unicorn in that in a, it truly is a fly-in experience with your own boat. And it's fantastic, absolutely yeah, it's outstanding. Really. In our case, we get to cover so much more of the lake than, than we normally would if we're just in a camp. Well, you get a camp boat with a 9.9 .9 or a 15 horsepower, you got this boat with 300 horsepower. There's a bit Eight of a difference. power, <laughs> baby. A bit of Eight a difference. power. <laughs> Ange and I rely strongly on our fishing electronics pretty much every time we're on the water. If you're at all familiar with our approach, you know that we are absolutely nuts about Garmin's live scope forward viewing technology. On this day, however, we honestly had so many fish around our boat that we went old school and kept a split screen of a map on one side and our traditional sonar on the other. As long as we kept seeing hooks and arches around our boat, we were constantly setting the hook. This episode's hotspot is an underwater hump on Lady Evelyn Lake. 
the waypoint on your screen puts you right there. For this trip, we found smaller fish on top of the hump, while the bigger fish were in the 25 to 35 foot range. As with many deep structures similar to this one in Northern Ontario, there were both smallmouth and walleye mixed together here. We used small shad imitating plastics on a drop shot setup. Either a straight light fluorocarbon line from the reel to the weight or a light braid to a light fluorocarbon leader worked fine for us. Remember that if you're fishing deep water like we were and there's a strong wind, upsizing to a heavier weight will help, which is key to fishing areas like this. Bait color didn't seem to matter, but shades of green were a good base to work from. For more hotspots like this one, check out fishingcanada.com. Yes. Nice, <laughs> nice. Nice jump. <laughs> good boy, Smalley, man. The electric motor with the uh, anchor lock on it, to me now, it's a must. How would we fish this without it? Yeah, you basically ah. the old days you have to anchor. You'd have to anchor, of course, when you anchor, you're gonna drop an anchor down there, you're gonna disturb that whole environment where the fish are holding, and so you throw an anchor down, everything's gone after you throw the anchor down. Not doing much, not doing much. Feels good. They all feel good. Yeah, they do, <laughs> you're right. Could be some following that thing too. I'm oh like, yeah. I'm waiting That's to true. see. That is true. That's Easy. a big fish. Easy. That is a big fish. Here he comes. Now he's going to show us what he is anyway. Coming up. How big he is. I think we know what he is, but there he is. Whoa. Nice, nice. <laughs> nice jump. <laughs> nice, perfect fish. He's got a friend with him, that's what yeah, we need to know. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Oh, that's a nice fish. That's nice. You want the net? If you can get it, it'd be yeah. great. Yeah, I'll get it. Sure. He's Keep fat. him in the water. He's fat. And there we go. Coming around. Easy. Nice. Jump in the net. That's all. That's got a bit of weight to oh, it. Oh, buddy. He's all right. Dark too, eh? Oh my God, is he ever dark? <laughs> That fish was pinned so nicely. You can want to catch all your all your smallmouth hook like that. Just right past the teeth and just in there where you gotta have a bit of a problem pull it out and eventually it comes. Yeah, that's a hefty fish. Nice smallmouth. Just what we were saying they were shut down. Eh? Yeah. Good northern Ontario smallmouth. Good looking smolly man. Wow. Love it. You buddy, you deserve to go home. It's a great backup fish, I'm telling you. Fill your lands they could catch probably 50 each on this one spot today. Maybe more, so it's a great backup. Well, you know, the other thing too, you come to a place like this, as far as just sport fish goes, you, you're not gonna beat smallmouth. And and then get a feed of walleye and have some shore lunch and stuff, but but going after trophy smallmouth like this, wow. And you're in, in Northern Ontario, a lot of the, uh, the operators are keying in on walleye. Well, a lot of the consumers are keying in on walleye, but, but any place where they've got smallmouth, which is pretty much all of the lakes in Northern Ontario, it's a great fish to target. It's just, and I don't think it gets enough fishing pressure. No, uh, like look at this world-class, one single fishing spot on a huge body of water that we're the only boat on it. We're the only, we're the only boat we've seen today. Yeah. This is land you, you, you can sit here for like I said, how many, how many fish could you catch? In, oh. in, a, in a trip, you could stop here every day for two or three hours, and it was on fire like it is now. You know, hundreds of fish at the end of your trip, eh? Yeah. Hundreds oh, yeah. of smallmouth yeah. per guy at the end of your trip as bonus fish on top of your walleye. To get to today's great fishing, Ange and I first drove north on Highway 12. We next traveled north on Highway 11 through North Bay and Tomogamy. From there, we turned west on 558, which is also called Mowat Landing Road. We next launched our rig at Mowat Landing and headed out on a short ride on the Montreal and Lady Evelyn Rivers. We were then trailered up and above the Matawapaka Dam and were launched into Lady Evelyn Lake. From there, it was about a 20 mile boat ride to Garden Island Lodge on the north portion of the lake. The Fish in Canada Show, brought to you in part by Yozuri Fishing Lures, fish the best. 
Mercury Outboards, go boldly. And Outdoor Canada, Canada's only national fishing and hunting magazine. Closed captioning for this episode is brought to you by FishingCanada.com, the gateway to your next fishing adventure.